Graduation day, as you might be able to tell by my six threads, and I'm pretty sure that means that I am entitled to a diploma and a clammy handshake. After that, I'm certified to practice engineering, according to whatever arbitrary metrics of quality they use these days. Well, let's see what we got here. Be good at the maths and physics? Mm-hmm. Check. Learn the tools of the trade? Checkaroo. Learn how to navigate the worst software UI ever developed by man. Seriously, what menu am I at? Writing and communication skills. Check. Discover by accident that it is easier to stay awake until 6 a.m. than it is to wake up at 6 a.m. <sighs> Check. Well, that's everything, right? But what about politics? Shouldn't engineers need to know about politics and ethics? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, technologies can be authoritarian or democratic. But no matter what the technology, they're all made by engineers. Therefore... This got me thinking about the role of engineers in society. Engineers who, through technology, have this enormous amount of influence over how we conduct our lives, where and how we travel, communicate, and work. But should engineers even care about ethics? I mean, does our work even intersect with anything like that? Well, that is what I want to find out. So before I get hitched to my job, plot twist, by symbolically putting on this ring given to me by the Order of the Engineer, I first want to understand what engineering is, and how best to practice it. Let's turn the dial all the way back and talk about Daedalus, who many would consider the first engineer. The abbreviated myth goes like this. After building the labyrinth to house the Minotaur, Daedalus was thrown in by King Minos to die within. However, Daedalus, knowing his creation, was able to escape with his son Icarus. The two of them flew away from the island on gliders that Daedalus had crafted, but the gliders, they both knew, were imperfect machines that would fail if either of them flew too close to the sun, which Icarus did because he was overconfident and wanted to explore the limits of his machine. He crashed into the waves below and died. And they say flying is the safest way to travel. Now, the moral of the story is that young people are idiots. But also, whether it meant to or not, it's also a commentary on the nature of technology. It's a story about moderation and caution. There is something poetic about dying by the very thing that you use to gain your freedom. And this brings me to my point. How not to use technology? Society, it would seem, has very mixed views on technology at the moment. Some people decry the pervasiveness and the hubris of modern technology. And this isn't just a straw man argument, these people are out there. They live on Facebook. Heck, find me one Hollywood movie where soulless technology isn't the villain. But there is a legitimate argument to be had about how far is too far. The reason that people have this philosophical problem with technology is simple, but it isn't obvious. Technology has politics. Don't be absurd. Technologies are just tools. Society is what makes them political or not. Let me respond to that with a question. Have you ever used a toothpick? Even the most innocuous technologies still wear their politics on their sleeve. This is an American toothpick, and this is a Japanese toothpick. The Japanese version has a bit on the end that you can break off so that the pick may be set on the table and reused. The American version is single-use and disposable. While this may be shrugged off as pointless trivia, ask yourself what it says about their respective cultures. 
Whether toothpicks are the product of a wasteful society, or if they encourage society to waste, I don't know. And then there is me, who boldly defies societal convention and sees toothpicks for what they really are. Weapons. Alright, well maybe things can be political, but we control technology. It does not control us. Wrong again, my intellectual foil. In order to believe that, you would first have to believe that technology is completely incapable of changing our behavior. Which, if you think about it for a second, is kinda foolish. Robert Moses is the engineer responsible for New York City's Long Island Public Works. In his time as an architect, he oversaw hundreds of projects, ranging from buildings to bridges to parkways to playgrounds. But the man held some... concerning values. Many of the overpasses that Moses designed were rather short, under 10 feet of clearance. Tall enough for cars to drive underneath, but not tall enough for buses or public transit. Moses held that it was merely an aesthetic choice, but letters recovered after his death indicated that it was, in fact, a deliberate choice to restrict the movements of poor people, mainly immigrants, who relied on public transportation. The overpasses were therefore barriers to their movement throughout the city, while richer, predominantly white inhabitants who could afford cars could move freely. Moses was never an elected official, just an engineer. Even so, he used his technology, bridges, to enforce his racism. I... I don't believe it. A bridge is racist. Of all the people that use those overpasses, to this day, I bet very few of them even think it's odd that the overpasses are as short as they are. And of those people, I would suspect that almost nobody thinks that they're an instrument of racism. And you know what? Racism in technology doesn't even need to be intentional. Remember the hand soap dispensers at Facebook's offices? Would it be a leap in logic to assume that a fair-skinned engineer designed that? But should engineers even care if technology ends up being racist or sexist or communist? While some people say, let the winds blow and whatever happens, happens, others say that it is the responsibility of engineers to promote social justice. And I care about equity and stuff. Now, I may just be a cis white male, but I respect woman. In, in fact, Natasha, would you come in here for a moment? Yeah. I just wanted to say that I, I appreciate you, and if you ever need your toaster fixed, I'm your guy. Technology is not made in a cultural vacuum. Technology is a response to a cultural or societal need, and in some cases, change society by its very existence in unforeseen ways. And it's because of the toothpicks and the bridges and the hand soap dispensers and all the rest that I realized that technology isn't merely technical, it's political. For years, I've thought about engineering all wrong, I thought that engineers were just smart people who make clever contraptions, but I don't believe that anymore. If technology truly is political, then it should be used for good, to help the poor and disenfranchised rise up and to make people's lives better. I like the way that Richard Feynman talks about science in his book, The Meaning of It All. He writes, Is science of any value? I think the power to do something is of value. Whether the result is a good thing or a bad thing depends on how it is used, but the power is of value. Technology has done a lot of good, a lot of bad too, a consequence of action without consideration. Engineers, such as myself and a large part of my audience, need to apply ourselves to understand and practice ethics. The difference between a hobbyist who builds something in their garage and an engineer is that engineers make decisions that affect the lives of thousands or millions of people. 
It's a tremendous but subtle aspect of the job. And there are organizations out there that recognize that engineers' responsibility extends beyond the technical. One such is the Order of the Engineer, whose credo has very little to do with technical prowess and a lot to do with ethics and politics. And that's why I sought them out, and they gave me this signifying steel ring to be worn on the littlest finger of the work hand, intentionally to bump into things as a reminder. You know, I think I know my role in society now, and I'm ready to accept it. Or I could catastrophically disappoint my parents by becoming a YouTuber. Yeah, I'm sure I'll find other ways to disappoint them. Did somebody turn this already pretentious video up to an 11? Well, I guess now I say something suitably profound. Eh, the moment's gone. I'm gonna go now. All this pretentiousness is making me itch. Well, that's anticlimactic.